All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today, we are talking about an article that just popped up, and it is about basically DoorDash putting pressure on McDonald's to get shit done, because apparently stuff is not getting done at McDonald's. And when you think about it, just before I even read this, because I actually haven't read the article, my first thought is like, how can you rely on something that is as cheap as it gets? You know, when you are ordering from McDonald's, you are expecting very low orders, probably very low tips. It's probably not the place that you would really go and accept an order if you are going to be getting a big tip. So a lot of things in McDonald's probably aren't gonna be running as smooth as they possibly could rather than if you're going to like a higher end restaurant. That is my first initial thought. I'm interested to see what this is all about. So let's read the article. I think, I think it's gonna be interesting. But before we get there, question of the day to you guys. What's the most money you guys have made in one day? I've seen a lot of like discussion in the comment sections about people saying they've made like 300 bucks in a day, all that, yada, yada. Let me know what's the most that you guys have made and be honest, don't lie. There's no reason to lie. And because a lot of people are like, there's no way you can make that much. And honestly, I think the most, I, I never cracked $200. I think I got to like 180 one time. That was the most I ever made. Anyways. Let's read this article. In an, or in an ongoing power struggle between restaurants, aggregators, and the merchants on the platforms, DoorDash has found a new way to get the results out of its restaurants. The aggregator will begin to impose higher fees on McDonald's restaurants that prepare orders more slowly. So it's about McDonald's not doing it quick enough. But again, like I was saying, like what do you really expect? You know, you don't buy a really cheap car and expect it to perform super well. You don't go into business with, like, typically when you think, like, when someone says, oh, are you going to work for McDonald's or something, that's kind of like a low, low-paying job, entry level, as entry level as it gets, to be honest. Like, there's not much re skills that are involved in working at McDonald's until you get to, like, at least higher up spots. So, the food delivery giant is lowering its starting rate for the quick serve restaurant brand to 11.6% or for 14.1 for dashing members, which honestly doesn't mean anything. I don't really understand these numbers from 15.5%. So basically it's gone down about 4%. If a location keeps drivers waiting, however, the rate could go up to as high as 17.6%. Interesting. Additionally, the QSR locations will now have to cover Quick service, what is it again? Quick service restaurants. Locations will now have to cover funds or refunds related to errors made by the store after a set of complaints. Honestly, this is the problem with those fast food places. That for one, the people that work there usually do not give a damn about the restaurant. They don't care about McDonald's or anything like that. And they generally don't put very much effort into it. You know, you have to have motivated employees in order to get motivated results. If you don't, then I mean, it's like you get what you pay for, really. But I can see there being a ton of problems with McDonald's. Or anytime I order from McDonald's, I already don't expect it to come out correct. Uh, DoorDash does not comment on confidential client contract terms. A DoorDash spokesperson said in an email, uh, the fee structures for our merchant partnerships can be can vary by store, franchise, and location. It can be determined by a variety of factors, including volume, average delivery distance, and value-added services, as well as operational performance and quality. Any summary can be uh, mis highly misleading. Move to raise commissions on slow orders could help the delivery service make up for high cost of having a on-the-clock driver waiting around to collect consumers' orders. It doesn't really affect them, though. You know, DoorDash doesn't pay you for sitting there waiting, to my knowledge, at least. You know, if you accept a certain rate, that's the rate you get, you get, you know? It's not like on Postmates when you used to get paid. It would start at $4 and it would go up like 10 cents every 10 minutes or something like that. I don't think that it's the same pay structure because I don't believe if, you, if a restaurant takes freaking 30 minutes to get your food i don't believe you get an extra couple dollars or anything for sitting around it's kind of just on the driver but i don't know maybe doordash is taking profits out of that who knows anyways 
while many restaurant labor's challenges are out of their control, that's another thing. You know, so many people don't want to work right now. So trying to get good employees and stuff is probably pretty hard. I would imagine that these restaurants are struggling to get decent, like, employees going and stuff, you know? It's pretty hard to hire people at this moment. So that's my initial thoughts on this. Hello, Dylan. <laughs> this is Dylan's bedroom currently. Many restaurants are seeking solutions such as these that can help great operate more efficiently, according to data from January, blah, 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 blah. A study found 29% of food, entertainment, and accommodation businesses reported planning to invest automation and robotization. Can you imagine just robots making all your freaking hamburgers and stuff? That's pretty much what's going to be happening. I mean, that's the only way they're going to really survive this, to be honest. Uh, and then 55% of restaurants plan to buy or upgrade equipment towards this kind of stuff, which makes sense. You know, it's hard to hire people that want to even do this kind of work. I mean, like, I've never been the one to even think about getting out of bed and going and working for, like, a company like McDonald's or any of this kind of stuff. So, it, I mean, it's expected, you know, from, like, low-end stuff. You get low-end results. That's what it is. And it seems like Doris is kind of like putting it on McDonald's as it's like their fault. But it's a very interesting position to be in because, you know, you have a lot of – you're going to have a lot of problems with any time you're working with low-level clients like that. And, I mean, if if so, because if someone screwed up my order at Cheesecake Factory or another high-end restaurant or something, I'll be pissed, you know. That is not something expected. If someone like – puts cheese on a cheese or on a hamburger and I didn't order it with cheese or something, you know, some like if there's onions and I order it with no onions, I just kind of am like, yep, it's what I get for going to McDonald's. So it is what it is, but apparently they have a solution to figure it all out. Let me know. Do you guys go to McDonald's? Do you guys do McDonald's orders? Personally, it's got to pay pretty well and I typically try to avoid them, but especially like normally I do spend now that I think about it, most of the restaurants that I do spend excess time just waiting around and stuff, that's usually at McDonald's, to be honest. So, I don't know. Lots of problems with them. But, again, it is what it is. Anyways, if you guys enjoy these videos at all, please consider subscribing and also smash that like button. Let me know your guys' thoughts and comments down below. And if you guys have any videos that you guys want me to talk on or any suggestions, my email is down below. You can send them to my email or you can DM me on Instagram at Tanner Markley. Let me know. Anyways, guys, go make that money. Make that money, guys. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.